Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for you for joining in. Um, so basically, just like Ashton said, we're going to be talking about the vacuum uh, erection device. Uh, before we start off uh, talking about the actual product, let's I do, let's actually go through the erection process itself and um, what are we going to be expecting. Uh, so basically, uh, the first uh, part of an erection starts with any type of sexual stimulation or arousal, which will actually make the nerves um, send signals to the penis about the arousal, which in turn will basically just make the muscles of, and the arteries relax. That way more blood flow or blood flow can go into the penis, into the actual corpora, and then create the engorgement. And that blood actually will cause the tumescence or the, the erection. Now, as those sinusoids or as those corpora start to swell up and fill with blood um, from the blood that's coming from the arteries, that will in turn compress the veins and then that will make sure that the erection stays and it's not lost and enables the penis to basically remain or maintain that erection. Now, uh, today we're gonna be talking about the rapport or the manual um, vacuum erection device. So basically what's a uh, vacuum erection device or VEV or penis pump or vacuum therapy or penis vacuum, it has like a bunch of names, but basically it, the main goal for it is just to produce or induce an erection. It's actually an FDA approved uh, medical device, which it actually had the first or its approval in the, in the early eighties. And uh, the construct of basically how it works, it uh, has a hollow tube that is placed over the penis, and there are different models, either battery or manually operated, and then what it will do is that will create a negative pressure and then will pull basically blood into the penis, allowing the penis to get then erect. There are different uses that it can have, not only it's used for to induce an erection and maintain an erection in order for any type of sexual activity, but also it can be used for reconditioning or uh, penile rehab or rehabilitation, the main difference will be the use of the constriction ring if, or, uh, if you actually want to maintain that erection or the use of not, or not using the actual uh, constriction ring just for rehab purposes. And um, the effectiveness is actually quite good. It's been shown to produce an adequate erection in over 90% of men. So the success rate of being able to actually induce an erection without any type of um, pharmacological therapy is actually of great, great use. So basically, the one of the most important things about the using the VED or the vacuum device is that they are made of multiple components. And like any other thing that you're going to be using, either any type of orthopedics or ophthalmology or any type of prosthetic or devices that you're using, you actually have to make sure that you get the correct fit so it's super super important that we get the actual correct fit and if we need to make any adjustments throughout therapy we'll be doing so so um the it looks like a very busy slide but this is basically just to show what are the um the report components of the vacuum erection device so basically we have the uh hollow cylinder or the penile tube we have the pump head, which is uh, in this case where we're going to be manually pumping. We then have the actual, the transfer sleeves, which is where uh, the sleeves where the penis will actually go through. Um, it also comes in, it brings a uh, water-based lubricant. And then it also has a constriction ring loading cone. That way we can place the constriction ring um, if we're going to be using it to, to maintain an erection a lot more easier. And the, also, it actually comes with a ring um, sizing guide along with um, the vacuum. That way we can choose the appropriate ring instead of just ran randomly trying them on. And of course, they do bring, uh, they come in with the uh, five different sizes of, of constriction ring, which you'll use determining uh, what size you actually um, have. Now, it's very important whenever we're dealing with any type of medical device to actually set up realistic and appropriate expectations as for the patient as to what to expect. Um, the, there is a learning curve. It's not like it's super hard or, or anything, but there is a learning curve 
which is basically why we're doing this webinar, not only to let you guys know about the product, but also to just show you what would be the proper way to use it. Um, that way we can make any type of adjustments as needed throughout the therapy if we need to make any changes. Now, it's the same thing as we're, when we're learning any new thing. If you actually, you actually have to have a desire to be learning how to use this device. And we always say that if you can get your partner involved, it's always a lot better because that way, not only are you guys gonna have a lot more communication and, and, and whatnot, but also you're gonna be setting up realistic expectations, not only for yourself, but also from your partner. And like anything before we actually try it, it, it is recommended that we actually, that you guys or, or the patient actually try the device beforehand um, so that way, if there's any issues or any of because of that learning curve, you are, you have tried it before and know what to expect before engaging in any type of sexual activity. And then the basically the the, the main goal uh, with this is just to be able to, for you uh, for the patient to be able to get a uh, maintain an erection, and typically it should be like the whole process should not take more than one to three minutes. So you will definitely need to be mastering it quite a little bit, but again, it's not like rocket science or anything. You should be able to to learn it quite easily with the with the instructions. Before you start, familiarize yourself with the contents provided in your Rapport Classic Vacuum Therapy device system. You will find the Constriction Ring Sizing Guide at the back of your Instruction for Use booklet. To use your Rapport Classic device, you will first need to determine the correct Constriction Ring size. You have received five Constriction Rings with your Rapport Classic device. Select a slot which fits firmly around the base of your flaccid, non-erect penis. Try the largest size first. Each slot has a ring size marked above it, which corresponds to the ring you require. The constriction ring is placed at the base of your penis next to your body, and choosing the correct ring size is important to maintain the erection for the necessary period. Once you have selected the right ring size, you are ready to begin. There are two transfer sleeves provided with your Rapport Classic system. Depending on the size of your penis, you should choose which of the two is likely to be the most suitable. Remember, your erect penis will need to be withdrawn through the transfer sleeve. One of the transfer sleeves included with your Rapport Classic system is already attached to the penile tube. If this is the correct size transfer sleeve for you, you can leave it in place. If not, remove it and fit the remaining transfer sleeve. Fit the loading cone onto the transfer sleeve and apply a little lubricating jelly, included with your system, on top of the cone. Holding the constriction ring by the outer handles, simply stretch and pull the ring down the loading cone until it slips onto the transfer sleeve. Make sure the constriction ring is located on the flat groove at the center of the transfer sleeve. The constriction ring is now mounted and ready for use. Before continuing, make sure you use the lubricating jelly to lubricate the end of the transfer sleeve. Also, lightly lubricate the penis to prevent it from sticking to the inside of the penile tube during insertion, or while using the pump. The pump head has two small pegs on each side above the orange ring. These should be positioned into the two grooves on top of the penile tube. The two parts are then locked together with a twist so that the two pegs slot down and locate at the lower end of the groove. If these two parts are locked together correctly, it will ensure the unit is sealed tight enough to create a vacuum inside the penile tube. To ensure a vacuum will be created, insert only your penis into the penile tube and apply slight pressure to the seal with the transfer sleeve against your body at the base of the penis. To ensure that a vacuum is created, it may be necessary to groom the hair at the base of the penis. Make sure the constriction ring on the transfer sleeve is in the correct position with the handles to the top and bottom. Continue pumping slowly to create the erection. If you feel any pain, stop pumping and press the release button to eliminate the vacuum. 
you can try again when you're ready. Pumping slowly is most beneficial. When the desired erection has been achieved, continue to hold the tube tightly against your body. Ease the constriction ring off the transfer sleeve and onto the base of your penis. Press the release button to lower the vacuum pressure and remove the penile tube. With the constriction ring in place, sexual intercourse can be accomplished. If a condom is to be worn, it should be put on as a last step. Please ensure that the lubricating jelly used with the system is compatible with your condom type. To remove the constriction ring after intercourse, simply grasp the outer handles to stretch the central ring. As the blood is released from the penis, it will decrease in size and the ring may be easily removed. Do not wear the constriction ring for more than 30 minutes at a time and allow a minimum of 60 minutes between uses. So basically the vacuum or the VED can be used not only to promote and induce the erections, but also it can be used for penile reconditioning or penile rehab. So basically why or when would it be used for penile rehab or reconditioning? So it's basically for those patients um, that have not been, been sexually active for quite some time and are no longer experiencing any type of nocturnal erections or morning erections. Um, typically, this would be no, any type of nocturnal erections typically would just be increasing the blood flow to the penis, and that blood flow, of course, is going to be rich in oxygen, and that will allow to stretch and recondition the penile tissue um, without any problem. So there are of uh, multiple medical conditions that could actually cause ED, and then subsequently then lose or uh, the make the patients lose the nocturnal erections. So for those patients, this type of penile rehab is actually, is actually quite useful. And the, it's gonna be a little bit different as to when you're going to use it to induce uh, and maintain an erection. For in terms of penile rehab, you're gonna be using it between three to five times a week. And it will last, the whole exercises will last between 20 to 30 minutes. Now, the main uh, important thing in here is that we're not gonna be using the constriction ring because we are not going to be producing or maintaining that erection, which is the main goal or the main thing that the constriction ring works for. Um, typically, if we start doing this after one or two weeks, we should be noticing to get, starting to get some results, but there's no like secret ingredient or secret recipe that, oh, after two weeks, you will be having better or more nocturnal erections. That's not the case. Each person is actually quite different. But after two weeks, most of the patients should start to see some improvement or changes in their quality of the erections and the frequency of their uh, nocturnal erections. Now, uh, basically, when um, for the penile rehab, we're going to be using and, and placing the pump the same way that it was actually as if you were going to be inducing uh, and maintaining an erection. The only difference is that after you have obtain the erection, you will keep the erection on the tube, meaning that you will not be releasing the, the, the vacuum immediately, nor you'll be removing the, the, the penile cylinder or, the, or placing the constriction ring. Now, you will be holding the erection between one to three minutes, and then um, afterwards, you'll be uh, releasing the seal or releasing the erection, just making sure that you maintain the tube in place you're gonna wait a couple of seconds, and then you're going to be then uh, repeating the pro the process over in like making making sure you pump it again, induce the erection, keep it erect on the on the um on the cylinder, and after the same thing, and after one to three minutes, then you're going to be releasing the the back the the release button that way, and then you're gonna be losing quote unquote the erection. And then you're going to be repeating the same process for between three to five times. And typically five times a, a week is like the most optimal, but we don't need to overdo it. So it, this doesn't have to be done three to five times a day or anything like that. Just between doing it once a day for three to five days a week, it's actually more than enough. So who is actually a good candidate for, um, for, a, for a VED or a vacuum device? So actually, any type of any men who are having erectile issues could be a candidate for them. It's 
used to create, like I said, it's used to create and maintain interactions that are suitable for sexual activities and sexual intercourse. It can also be used in patients that are going uh, under penal rehab after uh, some type of prostate surgery or just those patients that have had this long-standing erectile dysfunction that they have not been able to obtain um, erections for quite some time. Um, and then also pa patients that have like just a partial response to the oral medications or even to the injection therapies could actually, the, the vacuum could be used kind of like a, a little bit of a push or a booster who could actually help to get better or improve directions at that time. So what are the side effects of the, of the VED? So first, since this is not, you're not gonna be taking any, any medications or, or nothing at all, we're not gonna be thinking about any type of pharmacological interaction or anything like that. Now, when you're using the vacuum device to produce and maintain an erection, meaning with the use of the constriction ring, this in turn can actually cause a blocked ejaculation, not that you're not gonna ejaculate or reach an orgasm, but the actual ejaculation of the, the seminal fluid coming out may be blocked because of the constriction ring. This problem shouldn't be happening if you're using it only for penile reconditioning or penile rehab. Um, and then some patients can actually, um, because of the negative pressure, and actually notice some numbness, bruising, or some just some discomfort as they're actually pumping the device. There is, uh, of course, you can always go to uh, manmd.com to actually view the, the instructional VED videos to make sure that you're using the correct technique. And the most important part whenever you're using a constriction device is that it should not be worn for more than 30 minutes because after that, the penis can actually start to suffer and then it can actually be detrimental to the whole process of the reconditioning and the use of the um, erectile uh, function. So now, it's always very important that patients that are on any type of antithrombotic or anticoagulation medications like warfarin, aspirin, um, clopidogrel, lovenox, any type of those medications, it's not an absolute contraindication, but since those patients um, can actually have a, li more, a little bit more of the side effects in terms of the swelling and the bruising more than anything else. So you should always contact and talk to your urologist or your provider to make sure that you are a suitable candidate for it. So now we're gonna be showing you just a, before we get into the questions and answer, just a quick overview as to how to use and proper assemble the device. Because it's one thing to see on the videos and then whole thing different to see it in person. Okay, so basically we have here the, the actual, the penal tube itself, and then we have the transfer sleeves and everything. But before we start off, we gotta determine what will be the size uh, or the best size for the actual um, uh, rings to use. So that, that's when we're gonna be using the ring sizing guide, which comes with the actual um, instructions. Now, um, bear with me here, I have a model, and that way we can actually show you what type of sizing. So basically, you just gotta make sure that it's actually snug, I'm sorry, snug fit, but not super tight. So for this um, uh, model, I think a six would be the best option. Now on the constriction rings, there are uh, two, four, five of them. They will have the number right here on the tab on the side. It's a little bit transparent, so it may be a little bit difficult to see at first. So basically the first thing that you're gonna be doing is depending again on the size of the penis, you're gonna be using one of the two uh, transfer sleeve, um, sleeves or seals. You're gonna be putting it on the end that is not does not have the notch that you're going to be putting the, um, the actual pump. Once you put it in, the next step is you're gonna be using the actual, um, the, the, the ring, the cone to actually load easily the constriction ring, but before that, you gotta make sure that it's actually quite well lubricated because it can be a little bit difficult if it's not. So you can use the loop that it actually comes with the device. Just put some here. And then you, you can stretch this out quite easily and it's not gonna break. So then you just go putting it here and get it all the way in. And then we take this off. 
And then basically the next step would be to just go over and actually put the actual pump head here on the other end of it. Make sure you click it or spin it so it actually latches on the lock here. And then the last thing is to then put the penis in. So sometimes if you you can you may want to first put some lube on the penis itself just so it won't stick to the tubing. Um, and that can be a little bit uncomfortable if it can happen. And then also you want to make sure that you lube up the base of it on the of the penis so you actually can it can actually help create the um, a seal and um, and it can be then just more effectively um, used. Also, if you have um, some a lot of like pubic hair, you can also trim those down just because you want to make sure you don't have to shave all the way always, but just so you can actually help make that um, seal here. And then basically you're just going to be start starting to pump the device until you actually reach the erection. I mean, this is not going to work, but, it's, but, um, but just so you can actually know and see what we're doing here. The other reasoning why we all want to make sure that we lube up the, the rest of the shaft is that as the uh, erection um, occurs, we want to make sure that the penis itself does not get stuck to the actual um, cylinder. And then after you've reached the erection that you want, you, that you are then going to be sliding off the constriction ring here to the base of the penis. So you maintain that erection and you don't lose it. And then after that, you're going to be releasing the uh, vacuum button here at the end. So you can then take off the penis without any problem, which is going to be now in the erect form with the constriction ring on. And if, if you're like the video said, if you're planning on using any um, type of uh, condoms after, you're going to make sure that they are compatible. Um, with the lube, and then um, you would put this on um, afterwards, just like now. So it's not too complicated, but you, the, it's super important that you actually get the actual, the correct sizing, because it will make a huge difference, as well as making sure that you lube up the base of the penis to help create that seal. Thank you very much. We're going to go right into our Q&A now, following that. So this person wants to know if a VED can be effective if you cannot get an erection normal. So yes, the the basically what the VED does, it's so it will pull up blood, both venous and arterial blood, to the penis, and then it will cause the engorgement, and then it will then be producing an erection. So if and if you're planning on using it or to maintain an erection and for sexual activity then you would be using the uh, the constriction ring in order for you for the erection to be able to be maintained. But yes, it can be used for patients that are not experiencing any type of erections as a um, treatment modality for erectile dysfunction that does not necessarily involve any type of surgery or um, any type of, of oral or intragovernosa medications. Ready. Next question here. This person says, I typically use injection therapy, ICI, for assistance. Should I practice with my VED before or after I inject ICI medication? So if you're using the, um, the, in, the intracarbonosal injections to produce the erection and you're getting an adequate response, you may not necessarily need to add this. However, this can be used as an adjunct in terms of if for the penal rehabilitation process to try and not necessarily for you if, if there's um, like severe uh, arterial damage um, or, or venous issues, not necessarily to just be able to get uh, a full erection by itself, but actually the VED will help you in terms of the penile reconditioning and it will help to just make the, the, the blood vessels and the tunicas more pliable and then therefore it can actually help in the long run to prevent either fibrosis or scar tissues from forming just because of the of the inactivity or the lack of spontaneous erection. So you don't necessarily have to use it in conjunction with the ICI if you're having adequate results with the ICI, but it can be definitely used as part of a rehabilitation process to help at least prevent some of that fibrosis or scarring that can occur if we're not having um, spontaneous erections, especially at night. Ready. Next question here. This person says they've been using a VED for 12 years. For the last two or three years, it won't keep me hard when I get in bed, even when using a very tight, small ring. What can I do to fix this? So it all depends. The first thing that we make that we want to make sure is that you're using first the correct um, rings. And also if you've been having or using the same device for some time, 
even though the it may occur as with any mechanical um, um, system or apparatus, it can actually lose some of its effectiveness. So you want to make sure that you are using an adequate one that has not had any problems or issues. And the other thing that you want to make sure is that you're creating an adequate seal to make sure that you are producing the erection on the on the cylinder. Because if you're not producing the erection on the cylinder itself, then definitely the erection will not get, you lose it because you're not able to obtain it adequately on the cylinder. So the one, if that's the case, uh, the first thing that you want to make sure is that you're making the seal, it's, the seal is adequate, you're having the adequate ring, and then if all those things are, 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 are correct, then, and, and if you've been using the device for quite some time, the same system, or it has fallen or has had like some issues or whatnot, then probably it would be a uh, good idea to just change it um, in order to make sure that the device itself has not had any mechanical issues. Alrighty, next question here. <clears throat> I've not seen this one before, but this person wants to know if you know what an eddy by giddy device is and if it would work with a VED. So yes, it won't work theoretically because the giddy device, uh, so the giddy device is actually a constriction ring that has on the lower part has kind of like a notch or an opening. That way it does not pro uh, block the ejaculation, which can be caused by the actual constriction rings. So the only problem with the giddy rings is that since they are not compatible with the actual um, loading cone of the for the constriction rings, then you will not be able to actually pull it, put it here and then just pull it all the way down. And when you obtain the erection, just slide it back up to, to the penis to keep it in place and maintain that erection. So even though the, that type of um, uh, device works specifically as a constriction ring uh, to avoid the issues of, um, of an ejaculation or being unable to ejaculate because of the, the blockage that the ring can cause, it's, it, it's not actually um, um, uh, compatible with the device. And to my knowledge, I'm not sure if there's any VED out there in the market that you could use with the giddy um, uh, constriction rings. I mean, that would be up with the, to the manufacturer. I'm not sure if, that, if there's such a thing, though. Alrighty. Next question here. I understand there's many different brands and types of VEDs. Do they typically all have the same fit as far as the cylinder sizing we discussed? I'm not sure. So basically, the all the constrict the vacuum devices will come with multiple um, um, uh, basically the sizing um, sleeves. Now there are some manufacturers that actually um, do have some for extra thick or um, very small or thin penises. However, most of the um, almost all of them should be able to fit. Um, I mean, not necessarily, but most of them should fit. Um, now, the important thing about when wherever we're, we're using any type of vacuum erection devices, we want to make sure that uh, it's it's not something that is has not been well studied and and or even uh, does not have a medical grade quality because the there are some vacuum devices that actually can create so the pressure the negative pressure it's so much that at the end what it can do is actually affect the erectile tissue rather than help with the erectile tissue so that's why it's very important that whenever we're using a vacuum device that we should use one that is actually um, of adequate or high grade medical quality in order for us to be able to prevent that. Alrighty. About this question in the chat again, I believe you covered this in the slideshow, but how frequently is it safe to use the VED for intercourse? Daily, twice weekly, or less? So at least we recommend, so there's no ba like a magic number basically, but at least the important thing is that you can use it on a day-to-day -day basis if, if needed or if you want. The most important thing is that you have to use um, the constriction ring for no longer than 30 minutes. Because it, and it's very, very important that we actually make sure and emphasize that because after 30 minutes, the changes that occur inside of the, of the penis with the constriction ring on can actually affect in the long run the um, the, erecta, the erectile tissue and then it will be detrimental to the actual um, rehab therapy or the actual um, erectile therapy. So that's the main, main important thing is that. And then if you're planning on using it more than once a day, 
at least at least you should wait at least one hour in between sessions Alrighty, kind of a piggyback off that question this person asks or says the penis rings that came with my device left somewhat of a permanent indentation on my penis what can i do so that's what it's very important that's one of the main reasons why it's so important to actually be able to use the correct sizing of the rings now with the rings when you put in the rings you will it will cause a slight indentation because it's basically what it's doing it's the job that the veins are not basically doing in terms of when we have an erection we basically feel the corpus or the cylinders with blood and then that pushes to the side the veins not allowing the blood to backflow and come out of the penis so the constriction ring basically do that so you want to make sure that it's actually on a um, on an adequate um, the sizing is not too super tight because that could happen and then as with anything the in turn that could actually cause if it's too tight and not appropriately sized that could actually cause in the long run some scar tissue there and then that indentation could actually become a permanent thing um, so that's basically what we want to make sure that we avoid but it, it, it has been shown that if the sizing is not correct you can cause some indentations at the base of the penis where the constriction rings are placed. Alrighty. Next question here. Why am I unable to keep the erection after using the pump and ring? So the if we're, if we're whenever we're using the, the vacuum device to main to obtain and maintain an erection, we gotta make sure that we are using it correctly with the use of the constriction ring. Because once, if you are able to obtain the erection while the penis is on the cylinder, but at, if you release the, um, the vacuum um, release button, or if you press it before, act, before putting the constriction ring, then the erection will be lost because basically the, all the work or effort that the pump has done is actually just, just lost because the constriction ring was not placed. Therefore, the erection cannot be maintained. So that's the first thing that we got to make sure is that if we're using it, to maintain that erection is to make sure that we are able to or using it with the uh, constriction ring and uh, and then more importantly the best thing that we can know or use to see if we're actually using it properly is to see if we are able to obtain the erection while or the can the penis get hard while the penis is still on the cylinder so if the penis does not get hard while it's not on the cylinder then it should, it's probably either an issue of the uh, seal that's being created or the, um, the, the, the transfer uh, or the seal sleeves that are, are used are not the appropriate sizing, um, or there may be an issue with the, um, with the device if, you are, if you're not able to then obtain the erection on the cylinder. If you are able to obtain it, then just by putting on the constriction ring should help um, with, to help to maintain that erection. Certainly. A little bit of a follow-up to that one as well. Someone else asked I well, similar question. They said they use a VED and they're not able to maintain an erection. They followed up with a second question after that and says, do I have what is known as a venous leak? So the, the term venous leak um, is actually something that we would determine by doing a uh, Doppler sonogram on the penis to see how the veins and the arteries are actually working. It, it can have adequate and the vacuum device should help patients with either arterial insufficiency or venous leaks. It does not, not necessarily mean that the, just if it's not working that it's because of a venous leak because the use of the constriction ring will help basically or do the job that the veins are um, are supposed to do. So if you do have a venous leak and you are able to obtain an erection with the cylinder in place, then just by putting the constriction ring, you should be able to maintain that. Now, bear in mind that there is around a 10, nine to 10% of patients that regardless of the type of erectile dysfunction that they have, the pump may not help or may, or may not do, give or the best results that they actually um, are expecting that's why one of the first things that we got to do is set not only with the patient but also with their partner setting up realistic expectations as to what will be the best options and what to expect understanding that the, even though it's very rare but there will be some patients that may not necessarily um, respond to the VED therapy all righty next question here 
Recommendations for uncircumcised men using a VED. So the only no, the only the only thing that we gotta make sure is that sometimes sometimes um, patients that are not circumcised can actually have a very tight foreskin, and that can be a little bit bothersome. But it should not it, not being circumcised is not a contraindication for not for using the VED at all. Um, the same thing is you just gotta make sure that you are able to to just lube up the shaft of the penis, and that would include then in that case the distal foreskin. So it doesn't get stuck to the vacuum, to the inner tube. Um, so that way, when you're doing the vacuum, um, the actual negative pressure, it actually may be able to slide off, and it won't get um, kind of like caught, quote unquote, on the on the inside of the cylinder. But yeah, it, it, there's no contraindication for an uncircumcised man to be using the the vacuum device. The only thing is that, of course, since this is going to be pulling blood into the the whole shaft into the head of the penis, it will also pull blood, um, some blood into the foreskin. So you can sometimes get a little bit of just mild swelling of the foreskin, nothing like too severe or bothersome, but they can get uh, just a little bit of swelling or edema on the distal foreskin. So that that way they know um, what to expect, but it shouldn't be any issues or any, uh, there's no contraindication at all. All right. Saw this one a couple times in the live chat and beforehand. Can a VED be used to stretch slash increase the girth and length of a penis? So that's a yes and no question uh, answer actually. So it will help um, in making sure that we get enough and adequate blood flow. It actually can help with some of the elasticity of the um, of the actual cylinders or the corporas. Um, so it can help in terms of that the to say that oh you're going to be using it to gain length that's not necessarily now bear in mind that when you're using the ved you're bringing blood not only to the shaft not only to the cylinders or the corpus you're also bringing um, some blood to the subcutaneous tissue so with the ved it can pro give the impression that you're actually um, gaining a little bit of girth and or length but it's just because of the way or the area where the blood is being actually pulled over um, and, and stays there. So it can be used in, in many cases to actually, um, especially when there's a lot of fibrosis or scar, to just soften off that, um, that tunica, but, um, but it may not necessarily provide you with increasing in length or, or girth, actually. All righty. We're going to switch over to some questions about VED for other therapies. I've seen this in the chat and beforehand as well to varying degrees, but this person said, I had a prostatectomy 22 years ago. Will a VED help my erectile dysfunction? So the VED should be able to help with the erectile function because basically the regardless of the reason why there's any type of uh, erectile dysfunction, the VED, again, in most cases, over 90% of the time, will be able to help. Because basically, again, what we're doing is just pulling blood into the penis um, with the use of the vacuum device. So it should be able to promote and induce that erection. And then if you're planning on having any type of sexual activity, then you should be using the constriction ring. In that way, we can actually help to maintain that erection. Now, after a prostatectomy, you can also use it as a uh, penal rehab um, uh, modality without the use of the constriction ring. Um, so regardless of what the plan is, I, it, it's definitely a good option and it's worth trying, especially if we have failed oral or in, intracavernosal or intraurethral medications, or if basically you just don't want to use any type of other type of medications because at the end, once you kind of like master using it and making sure that you know how to properly set it up and whatnot, it should not take more than one to three minutes to set it up and be able to have that erection. In that way, you can just start um, in any type of sexual activity. So I think it's fair, regardless of the time that has spent. Now, bear in mind that the more time that has spent without adequate erections, then the penis will atrophy. And then you can actually notice some decrease in size, in length, in girth, um, so definitely the, the more we wait to start using it, we may not have the best results, but it's definitely worth trying because it's an actually, uh, again, over 90% of patients will be able to obtain um, and maintain that erection with the, the VED device. All righty. 
follow up to that question. When is it too late for penile rehab post prostate removal? So it's never too late for uh, for penile rehab, honestly. So we try if we're fairly aggressive at our clinics in terms of after a prostatectomy, as soon as the Foley catheter comes out and the patient is no longer in having any pains or issues, then we try to start doing some penile rehab as much as we can and as much as the patient can tolerate. Um, so in our case, we try to do it as quickly and as promptly as we can after the surgery and the patient is able to tolerate it. But at the end, there's no like cutoff time. Oh, if it's been so many years, you're not going to be able to to use it or whatnot. So that's not entirely true at all. So it, it's never too late. It's basically the, the the takeaway answer. It's never too late to start penal, penal rehab or just using it to be able to obtain and maintain that erection. All righty, awesome. Next question. I recently had inguinal hernia repaired. If I pronounce that right, I don't know, but would it be safe to use a VED? So yes, it, the, it, there shouldn't be any issues with the, the use of the VED after an inguinal or either unilateral on one side or bilateral on both sides, inguinal hernia repair. And also regardless of the modality, even if it's um, an open approach or if it's a laparoscopic approach, typically we recommend waiting for any type of surgery. Um, typically, those type of surgeries you can just wait after you have fully recovered and then you can that when it's safe that the surgeon says that you can resume sexual activity you can then resume the um using the bed but there's no contraindication at all after a hernia surgery all righty awesome so we covered this briefly earlier um jumping back to some general VED questions but we covered this earlier um this question came up more than once so i'd like to cover it again is grooming or shaving necessary to properly use a VED? So it's not necessarily um, needed, but it definitely will help create the seal. It's not like we have to completely shave off all the pubic uh, um, hair, but at least shaving or trimming down the, the hair that's at the base of the penis will actually help with putting the lube in and making sure that the seal is actually pretty there tight um, because if not, the hairs, even if you put some um, lube, the hairs can get like in the way of being able to properly create that seal and the results may not be the best one. So if you do have um, a moderate uh, amount of uh, pubic hair, especially surrounding the base of the, of the, and the shaft of the penis, it is recommended to actually trim it. You don't have to shave it if you don't want to, but at least trim it down a bit. That way the loop can sit in properly and then the vacuum um, or the cylinder can actually fit in better. And that will definitely create a better seal. And it will make a huge, huge difference if you've been having this issue in the past. All righty, continuing right along. Next question, can injury occur by over pumping a manual device? So typically when, whenever, so the, it all depends on what type of device you have. Because the most of the um, medical grade quality devices, they will have a lockout valve in which after a certain amount of, of, of negative pressure, regardless of how much you pump it, it will not be able to generate additional negative pressure. So from that end, it's actually not a bad um, uh, option because it may not necessarily injure the penis. Now, the problem comes whenever we're using a uh, pump that is not of medical quality or medical grade device, then that it may not, if it does not have the lockout valve, then you can keep pumping it. And, um, and definitely, if you keep overdoing it, you can affect the, um, or damage the, the penis, for sure. Um, but typically, that's why we always say to just start off and try it beforehand before you engage in, in any type of sexual activity, because we want to make sure that you are able to tolerate it and that you're not over, um, in, over um, pumping it or you're just not causing any pain to yourself, any issues. So the best way to avoid any type of damage would be to make sure that the correction device you're using is actually of uh, medical grade quality. Alrighty. So follow up to that, which I believe you pretty much answered by saying, just make sure it's medical grade. What is better, manual or electric? So it all depends on what your preferences. Um, I think both are very good. It all depends on what the patient actually prefers. The, again, the more, like you said, the most important part of either 
getting a manual or getting a, an, an automatic one, the most important thing is to make sure that it is of, of actually uh, medical grade quality in order in order to make sure that the negative pressures generated by the vacuum device are not going to be damaging the erectile tissue and then causing even more problems in the long run. Alrighty, moving right along, next question. I thought pumps work by pulling blood into the penis, but when I release the vacuum, my penis is cold. Is this normal? So it, the main thing is whenever we have a quote-unquote natural erection, um, we only are filling the penis with arterial blood. Now, when we're using the vacuum device, we're not only bringing blood that is rich in oxygen, arterial blood to the penis, but we're also using bringing in or pulling some of that um, venous blood as well that doesn't have as much oxygen. So because of that, you can actually see that there may be um, changes in the temperature or even in the a slight changes in the sensation of the penis and how it actually feels. Uh, but it's just based because of that we're just pulling venous, both venous and arterial blood into the penis. So it's something that's fairly expected with the therapy device. Ready. Next question. Is it normal to have decreased penile sensitivity for up to a day after using a VED? So one of the side effects of the, of the, of the, of the vacuum device is actually that you can have a little bit of decreased sensitivity. And most of the times, this is just something that's transient. The best way to try to avoid it is by avoiding over pumping it or avoiding, um, or avoiding using a lower or a, not a medical quality device, but even so, even if we do use a medical quality device, we can experience some, a little bit of numbness or sens decreasing sensation, which again, should be transient and should be restored within the next couple of hours. It will be very rare for it to actually last for more than 20 or 48 hours afterwards. That's, if that happens, definitely we should wait until the next time that we use the device until full, all the sensation has been restored. Great. Next question. What are the protocols for using a VED while on blood thinners? So the main thing is, so there's no actual protocol that, oh, you have to use this or, or this other way. But again, the best way that we can prevent and um, any type of e issues or side effects is to make sure that we get a medical grade quality one that is not over pumping and creating excessive negative pressure because patients with anticoagulation will be, of course, are gonna be uh, a little bit easier bruised than other patients. Um, so the, if we are using the vacuum device, even if it's a medical quality one, we can see or notice some hematoma or some um, 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 echinosis or, or uh, just changes in the, in the color of the subcutaneous skin because of, of some pooled blood. But we, the best way to avoid this is to actually use medical quality devices. And if, in fact, you do notice that you do get a hematoma or some swelling um, and you are on anticoagulation, of course, you're not going to be stopping the anticoagulation, but definitely just wait until the next time that you use it until all the, the hematoma and the swelling has resolved. So it's not an absolute contraindication to, um, you, to, not, to use it or not use it if you're on at some sort of anticoagulation medication, but definitely you have to be a little bit more wary and a little bit more... Um, um, making sure that things are, you don't have any other issues or side effects with it, um, and just being careful, basically. But it's not a contraindication at all. Alrighty. We got time for about one or two more questions here. Next question is, can a VED cause prostate or bladder problems? No. The, the VED is only going to be helping or, or, or just bringing blood into the penis, so it should not have any effect on bladder, prostate, testicles, inguinal hernias, or anything at all. So the only things that you can expect is to get the erection. And um, if you do experience some of the side effects, which could be a little bit of swelling, bruising, or decrease in sensitivity, especially afterwards, um, but you should not be able to have any type of problems with either the bladder or the prostate or any of the other gen genital urinal organs at all. Alrighty, and the final question here, because I've seen it many times in the chat and beforehand, can you use a VED along with ED medications such as Tadalafil or Cialis? 
So yes, you can. Now it's very important that typically if you are able to, like the same, it's the same as with the intracavernosal injection. If you are getting excellent response on, with the oral medications, you may not necessarily need it to be able to engage in sexual activity, uh, but it can be used definitely for in terms of penile rehabilitation um, in at any other moment. Now, if you're using the oral medications and you're not getting the best, quite the best response and you're using them properly, waiting the uh, appropriate time, making sure you have arousal and, and all those other um, things that you have to make sure that you that are occurring when you actually take the medication. And despite all that, you're still not obtaining the best direction or not uh, the rigidity that you're expecting or planning or wanting, then you can use the VED in conjunction, just following the same, this, basically the same um, instructions as to how to properly set it up. And more importantly, to make sure that when you use the constriction ring, you don't use it for more than 30 minutes. Alrighty. <clears throat> That brings us to the end of the show here. So I'd like to thank Dr. Fernandez for taking the time. If you'd like to learn more about VEDs, you have a few options. There are more resources in the Resource Center on menmd.com. You can visit this page to view instructional videos, guides, expert articles, and more. You can contact MenMD support if you have a question or would like to speak with someone in person by calling us at 857-233-5837 or log in to the password protected secure MenMD portal to schedule an appointment with the Men MenMD personal health assistant. If you're interested in purchasing a VED or learning how much they cost, you can do so by visiting the shop page on menmd.com or by calling our office at 857-233-5837.